The flaming figure emits the hymn twines around winged key from stone. The spirit of a young robed man paces the chamber anxiously. He sees you approach. A look of trepidation crosses his spectral features. Did... did my order send you? To cure the child? The spirit falters, momentarily lost for words. Finally, he musters a nod. I was hungry and thirsty for days. Then I rested. When I woke up next to my corpse, I thought I was delirious. I hoped I was delirious, but eventually I realized what had happened. Some, some form of demon seized her and nested inside her mind. She cannot speak or move. We did what we could to help, but we could not risk provoking the beast within. We can find her here until a way to safely remove the demon could be found. It was my duty to watch over her. But I was never relieved of that duty. She has no family that we know of. All she had was a pet cat. That poor girl's life is drifting past her, thanks to that demon. Her cell is just over there. I can let you in. But are you sure you can help her? What are you going to do? Some of the best minds in Rivalon couldn't help this girl. And you think you can do better than they did. <sighs> but nobody else is coming to help, are they? I'll let you in, but promise me one thing. Whatever happens, take her away from this place. Far away. Please, I've waited a long time for this. I need a real answer. The spirit can't help but smile. I knew you had good in you. The moment I laid eyes on you. Come, I'll let you in. Take good care of her. Bring her somewhere peaceful. Don't disturb the demon within her. There's no telling what could happen if it breaks free. mistress anymore. Mistress saved me when I was a kitten. She took me in, fed me and kept me warm. She deserves loyalty. I won't leave her side, not until she wakes. My heart stopped beating and my flesh fell away. No matter, I'm staying here. The tension eases out from the cat's skeletal form. It sits. Go on. I'll be watching. The young girl lies still and silent in the center of the floor, bound by chains. Difficult to do anything for her until those are removed. The young girl lies silently on the floor, eyes open and staring. Her only movement is the tiniest rise and fall of her chest. The girl's eyes don't even flicker as you lean in close. Her fingers seem to grip you ever so slightly.
The girl's grip tightens. A flush of color spreads across her previously bloodless features. She's grown stronger, strong enough to move, perhaps. Mistress is gone. I can still smell her. She must be near. I'll find her. How fares the hunt, my friend? He smiles brightly and pulls you in for a short, if warm, embrace. You've done me proud, the Godwoken. Prouder than you could ever realize. I know how twisted the paths can get. How much more alluring the sunny glade than the rock-strewn hollows. But you know it's the darkest roads that lead to light. It will be my honor to teach you. The nature of my lesson, though, might be somewhat different from what you expect. I can deepen your bond with the Source, but you must realize that this bond comes at a cost. All life, after all, sustains itself by consumption. Like the grass feeds the herd, and the herd feeds the hunter, so you must feed, for instance, on these. He waves a hand to the cage in demonstration. The very same. For the sum of source that flows through their festering flesh is more than enough to expand the sum that is yours. Through demise, a chance of divinity. Then let us begin. Jahan's incantations befog your mind. All of you is thumping blood, pumping, pumping, pumping. Then, all you hear, then all that is, is screaming. From the cage to you, their blood in your ears, screaming. <coughs> Silence. That is all. Their sons have set to serve a greater dawn. The world awaits your true awakening. You are very powerful already. A master of the source. But I did not let this burst of power go to waste. It lies condensed on parchment for you to read and learn. He hands you a book, hot to the touch. A sparkle with source. My pleasure. And now that the lesson has ended, there is one more matter I would like to discuss. Offer you a chance to deepen our alliance. You see, the demon that you killed, the Advocate, he had a master. You might say the Advocate compared to his master like the pussycat compares to the tiger. It is the tiger I am truly hunting. The self-same tiger, I suspect, that has been haunting Losa. Now, don't you worry. I have no intention of sending you after this arch-demon. There are few enough Godwoken as it stands for me to force them into any real danger. The one thing I would like you to do for me, though, is to return through the mist to the Isle of Blood and uncover there his name. Jahan looks at you utterly flabbergasted, but soon an air of serenity descends upon him, that of a chess player overlooking the board. A drama leak. You have to admire his cunning. To think that in his guise of Deva, he and I shared the finest wines in the realm. Stories of the women we have loved. Thank you, Godwoken. You have done me an unparalleled service. 
And you've quite humbled me at the same time. You must go your path, I mine, so that I may confront the Archdemon in his lair, in the great city of Arx. Please accept this token of gratitude, and fare thee well. You have done me a great service. The time has come to serve you, if I can. Are you ready, Losa? Right. Really? Okay, yes. What? I'm ready. Totally. Is it just me, or did it just get really sweaty in here? I won't lie. This will be rough, Losa. Our foe is a true archdemon. We know him now. A Dramalik. There is a great power in names. Just like Source is the language of creation, a demon's true name is the core of its existence. It's be-all or end-all. With his name, we may undo him. That will be our attempt. As for you... His dark eyes flash at you. You must not disturb us, no matter what. Promise me. He nods respectfully in return, then focuses on Losa once more. Close your eyes, Losa. Do as I do. Jahan takes Losa's hands and begins inhaling slowly, deeply, then exhaling audibly through his mouth. Losa's breaths match his. They begin to hum in unison, a low, rumbling note held over several out-breaths. The humming grows louder and louder until... Quiet! Adramalik! Losa suddenly lunges forward, her hands reaching for Jahan's throat. Jahan steps away, and Losa tumbles to the ground before quickly scrambling to her feet. Losa's eyes are ink black, her skin corpse grey, her chest heaves in rapid pulses as she stares intently at Jahan. Adramalik! Thousand named nemesis! Lord of Soot, come shake black hands with me! Leave her. Leave her. Come play with me. This is none of your business, Jehan. How many times do I have to convince you to keep your nose out of my affairs? Listen to me, demon. I know why you chose her. I know what it is you fear the most and therefore desire the most. But I'll not let her serve you any longer. Losa's a good host, Jehan. We're going places. It's no concern of yours. Mashtu napathan shdanelu. Kaumel saravel, damarel saravel. He places a palm on Losa's forehead. She falls to her knees, seemingly overcome by some unseen force. You petulant would-be king. You're nothing. She is mine. She is mine! Kaumel saravel, damarel saravel. Mashtu, Shdanelu. Losa's eyes roll back in her head. She groans, her face slack and lifeless, while her body racks with spasms. Jahan draws his palm back from her. She is rigid on the floor. It's no use. It's too late. I... I failed her. The demon's not coiled around her heart. He's become her heart. Try as I might, he would not shift. Losa's soul is buried very deeply, deeper than ever before. A Dramalik may never allow her to resurface again. She's lost, bewildered. A stranger in her own soul, desperately trying to find her way home. She's fighting a battle for her life, for her very self. It's a battle she may yet win, even if only temporarily. But she'll need your help. 
You must call her spirit back from the dark. Guide her into the light. Let your voice be the shepherd that leads the lamb through the valley of wolves. Go on, call to her. She stirs, barely. Her eyes flutter open and dart around in a panic. They come to a focus on you. Hey, Chief. Well done. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Only just. I am truly sorry, Losa, that I couldn't exorcise the demon, but do not despair. I will not give up on you. We must simply take a darker path still. Confront Adramalik in his lair and deal with the demon face to face. You almost have to admire his cunning. To think that in his guise of Deva, he and I shared the finest wines in the realm. Stories of life and love. But now I know where he hides. Afraid of his own name. To the city of Arx you must go. I will travel with you, if I may. I will meet you both there and prepare for the coming battle. You'll yet be all, Losa. Hey. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not all right. That wasn't okay. It was... It was like dying. I was all alone in the dark, in the deep, deep dark. And I suddenly knew as clear as day that I didn't exist, that no one would ever know me, and then... <laughs> and then I heard your voice. I heard you calling, and... and I followed it. it. It was all I had in the darkness. It was the only thing I could find. Just you. Nothing else. What the hell do I do with... that? Tears stream down her cheeks. She steps forward and wraps her arms around you. I'm not even a real person, you know. I've got this thing in me, and my chance of getting better is getting smaller all the time. She holds on to you for a long moment before stepping away, wiping her face. Eventually, she smiles. I'm damn lucky I met you, Chief. Second time's a charm? Or have I asked too much of you? The blade quivers as Tarquin nears it and hums a response. An unfallen reveal. Amadi of Lucio de Anne Drita Dumores. Oh, very good. Very, very, very good. This, my friend, is the key. Give me some time and every deity in existence will tremble at the sight of you. He holds out his hand expectantly. Love. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must work. Tarquin turns away, but continues to mutter excitedly, almost religiously, about anathema. A sudden shuffle behind you, and Losa's mouth is close to your ear. Psst. Hey, Chief. I need to have a little chat with old Mouse about something. Mind if I butt in? There you are, Losa. I've been eager to hear a little update. Did you do as I instructed? Yeah, about that. Oh, do tell. This sounds interesting. That's one word for it, I guess. I met Jehan, and he tried the exorcism, but it didn't work. The demon's still knocking around in there, in here. Hmm. 
Well, leave it to me, Losa. Mama Malady will think of something. You will? Of course I will. Surely you know by now you're my favorite. Really? I didn't think you liked anyone. I didn't say I liked you. I said you're my favorite. The cherry pit at the top of the rubbish heap, if you will. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me. It's the nicest thing I've ever said. Aren't you supposed to be off learning how to become the divine and whatnot? Her eyes flash with something. Anger, perhaps, or fear. I... but... never mind. We'd better focus on the task at hand. She looks straight ahead, ignoring you. Well, aren't you industrious? It seems all the riffraffs back aboard as well. Ready to set sail when you are, your holiness. Fantastic. Now, on to the interesting part. After many adventures, the party finally reached the place where Godwo can go to become divine. But more surprises and difficult choices awaited. <laughs>